Good evening everyone, and first, let me apologise for the mistype of bitrate that led to such a shocking drop in quality in the last episode. Uh, to catch you up on what happened in that last episode, there was quite a bit. If you weren't able to watch it, which I wouldn't have blamed you for. We initially defeated Krokka and sent him packing. And we defeated Forek Ironbrow in an ambush battle where we were able to wipe him off of the map. However, at the end of the last episode, Krokgar has returned. And there is still a dwarvish army in our path. So we have two choices. We can either pull Kalida back. And Kalida can try and win the battle against Krokgar, which, you know, her army should be able to do with reinforcements. But if we do that, that gives time for Forek Ironbrow to return to raise another army. And we're going to be yo-yoing between Krokgar and Forek and Krokgar and Forek. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to see if the last defenders want peace. No, no they don't. So we're definitely going to end up fighting them. And then we're going to have a look at this army no, under Belagurn Starkeeper. It's got lots of long beards, much better than the base dwarven infantry. It has a hero and some miners with lasting charges. So what we're going to do is we are this turn... Gonna drop ourselves into an ambush stance along this now ravine. We go. And see if them marching forwards like Forek does allows us to get a better surround on their army. We are gonna pull King Jenna back to Rosetra. And I've done this already because I was thinking about this before the episode. We are gonna start training an army under King Rakash. In Libaris. Now, we're not doing it in the Doom Glade because I've accepted that we are going to lose some territory to Krokgar. Unless we can beat him in Rosetra, which, you know, has no walls and no real garrison, so I don't hold out hope. He is going to have free reign over some of these forces for a little while. And so we're giving up the Doom Glade if they choose to attack it. This will allow. Oh goodness me, voice crack. This will allow Kalida to march down and lay waste to a couple of dwarven cities here, weakening Forek and gaining the seventh book of Nagash for some of those campaign bonuses. Uh, I see that we're taking attrition. Well, it's not a lot, so sure. And Krokgar immediately marches on Rosetra. Looking at his army, it has a core of fantastic infantry. It has some heroes. Uh, but it is mainly just Soros. So I think we're going to go onto the battlefield. We're going to try and do as much damage as possible. And we'll see how this goes. I don't think we can win it. I don't think we've got the quality. I don't think we've got the sustain. Um, but I'm going to give it my best shot. Because if we can stop him here, or at very least do a hefty amount of damage, that makes the rest of the defense a lot easier. Alright, the armies are engaging. We have the Temple Guard being peppered by our Nehekada horsemen. I'm going to put them on uh, fire and retreat because I don't want to manage them. I normally don't put skirmish mode on. I think it's not very helpful. Uh, but on this occasion, I am a little concerned. So Let's get them on skirmish mode and hopefully then... This is why I don't think it's very helpful. The AI gets all sorts of buggy. It's really weird. Alright, what have we got over here? We have the Horned One flank coming in on this side, and their Blessed Horned Ones, Horned Ones too. Let's get our Spearmen into that. And plug some Nehekara Warriors into the line. Our reinforcements are coming, but they're slow. They are skeletons, so, you know, they're not going to get there any time soon. Archers, we need to focus on Krokgar. 
And over on this side, I'm going to try and get the cavalry behind the lines so that they can start doing some work. I'm going to push the spearmen here into the blessed uh, the Saurus Warriors with shields while the Blessed Temple Guard advance. We are going to get some healing. It is going to help a little bit, uh, but looks like I lost track of my spear cavalry and the Temple Guard were able to close with them. That's uh, very much my bad. Alright, that's quite the volley of uh, fire coming in from that Razadon hunting pack. Let's see what we can do about that with some archer fire. Let's get our spearmen to wrap around on this flank and send a unit of swords slightly further out. I want to keep everything as tightly combined as possible. And then over here where I think it can be the most use. I'm going to put the Ushabti in. We're going to try and overwhelm this flank with an Ushabti summon and uh, the cavalry that we possess. We are losing a crap ton of units. I don't think there's much of a way we win this one, to be honest. But we have managed to defeat the Skink Skirmishers, which is good. And now I'm actually I'm going to send this uh, group of Nehekara horsemen to target down the the Razadon hunting packs that are getting shot at slash spear charged. I don't know if there's anything else I can really do at this point. I guess we might as well put Jenna into the fight. He's going to die anyway, right? So, yeah. I mean, it feels doomed. It feels real lost. Um, because it is, basically. <laughs> what we're trying to do now is just weaken stuff. Like, if I can take out a unit of Razadon Hunting Pack, or even two units of the Razadon Hunting Pack, then we are doing very well. Oh, it looks like there's only one unit. This is a Skink Chief that we are trying to kill right now. But our line is crumbling, and there is very little we can do about it. Can we take out the Skink Chief? I'm not sure. I don't think so. I don't think he's going to break. Fight's going too well for his army. Oh, and this is unfortunate, but, you know, I did say we were going to give up territory, and we are going to have to, so... I think we're going to have to pull these back. Away from any spear units. Maybe we can get around the side here and take out those blessed horned ones with a good charge. It's hard to say. I think, you know, that ultimately this has gone about as poorly as I expected. The army size looks similar, but in reality, um, Saurus Warriors, blessed Saurus Warriors and Temple Guard are so much better than what I'm fielding that there was just, there was no chance, really. Maybe the Ushabti summon would have been better if I didn't summon it into a bunch of Temple Guard like an idiot. But nothing I can do there. I think this one, unfortunately, team, is over and we have lost Resetra at the start of this episode. Team Jenna has fallen, and with him, I think the morale and the crumbling is going to start very quickly. There it goes. We have been soundly defeated. But it wasn't a decisive defeat, it was a close defeat, so we could take some comfort in that. Well, we bloodied a couple of units, we did take out the Razadon hunting pack. Uh, I'm a little miffed that Vicious uh, Gobspit didn't help us. But there's nothing we can do about that now. Jenna was wounded, not killed. Our ambush did not succeed. We got a mission to raid somewhere. Now, I am going to summon in another lord here. Uh, what's this? Leadership aura. We're going to go with prepared. King Petit. 
the reason I'm summoning him in here is each province only has a limited amount of recruitment, and I want to make sure that this army here is getting everything and anything it can in terms of quality. Over here we can see that the dwarves have taken up Attack! defensive positions around Mount Arachnos. And we're told that we can win this but it will be a Pyrrhic victory. Now the problem with that is if we go in and it is a Pyrrhic victory... We can't push any further. Okay, we've deployed in Vanguard. And we are going to sliver these units forward. Looking very majestic over there. We are also going to deploy our infantry line just in case something goes horribly wrong. Down here so that we can begin to adopt defensive positions. Hopefully we won't need them. Alright, they are moving, so I reckon we just turn these guys off of fire at will and charge to break them around. Look at our Doom Scorpions just hunting that poor dwarf around. He's going back in! What's he doing? Okay, I think he's dead. <laughs> yes. Um. And now we have a choice. We can try and win this battle here. Or we can give up. And decide that we'll come back to it later. I think we're going to try and win this battle here, actually. I'm hoping for a big blunder on the half of the AI here, don't get me wrong. hope is that they charge down into this ravine and eat a shit ton of catapult fire. That's the hope. <laughs> Alright, looks like the reinforcements joining the battle has given this guy some morale back. So I'm going to pull our stalkers away because I need our stalkers to be ready to deal with the back line. We're going to turn them off of melee mode into ranged mode, and we're going to try and shoot this lord down. And then we're going to pull back and hide. This is a beautiful opportunity for a legions of Asaf. I mean, just look at how many dwarves there are in one place. Ooh, the catapults! Look at the damage! Good lord! Ooh! Ooh! ooh. I mean, this is such a huge group up that our catapults are getting insane value. 
I mean, just look at those half-elf units. Gonna retarget them into this clump here. I mean, don't get me wrong, we are eating a little bit of fire ourselves. I'm gonna start targeting down the archers before we run out of catapult ammo, though. Gonna try and get the stalkers around the side. I mean, we've done a tremendous amount of damage. Oh, look at those archer units getting decimated. I mean, without the quarrelers, we win this, I think. Okay, we'll see which way they decide to commit, but right now I'm pushing the scorpions in. The reason I'm doing that is I don't want the blasting charges anywhere near my main infantry line. Get the Ishapti on the side here, and look for another big clump up for the legions of Asap. If they don't give us one right away, that's okay. I mean, obviously I would like one, but... I'm not going to force the issue too, too much, because we'll clump them up on our scorpions and other things. Like, we have... We have options. I don't want to push too far up and through right now, because I do understand that we are at risk. But the tomb scorpions can be healed, so if they're going to try and force a flank... I'm going to try and take advantage of the fact they've split their army, you know? Like, I'm not sure why they're forcing the flank I'm not deployed on. I guess they just don't want to walk through the choke point, but it feels like they're just handing me free, free damage here. And I am not one to say no to free damage. Alright, let's get the most wounded scorpion healed up, and let's get the scorpions actually onto the quarrelers themselves. We'll get Kalida to intercept the dwarf warriors that are trying to swing in. And if we can, we're going to try and rotate the flanks here. Um, like, we're going to try and get our heroes and, and whatnot into a good position. We're going to drop the Nehru's Incantation of Protection to give some physical damage resistance to the Tomb Scorpions. And right now, I'm thinking that this is another good clump for the Legions of Asaf. We're kind of getting them stuck on some corners right now, which is always good. I mean, we did quite a lot of damage there. I'm going to use the melee version just to get rid of these catapults faster. Shooting at them doesn't appear to be doing the job that I want it to. I mean, we're taking some hefty damage, but at the same time, so are they. And that's the important thing. Like, maybe we don't win. Maybe this is still too difficult. But there's not much we can do other than try and fight this out. And I'm actually feeling pretty good about our chances right now. I mean, like, I'm mismicroing some of these scorpions, so that doesn't help. But, like, if you see the damage coming out from the catapults over here, there's a good chance that with the next restore going down, we'll be able to get some health up onto these guys. We've got the Sepulchral Stalkers in the back line, so shutting down the artillery. And we can target out the remaining Quarrelers. We'll even have another group of Vishapti coming in soon. That is something I have noticed with this particular army. Oh god, get the Necrotex out of there. I need him alive. Not that he has any more spells, but I can't afford to lose him for future battles, you know? Um, he's kind of shot his load as far as uh, spells are concerned, but that's alright. I'm gonna give Kalida... No, I'm gonna give the Tomb Scorpion here a buff to do more damage. 
and the legions of Asaf is going to come in to hit this melee line in a straight line here. We're actually going to retarget the catapults into that now too. To try and shut that down because the support crawl stalkers, they're not doing a good job right now of taking out this artillery piece. I'm not sure why. Like, it feels like this artillery should have been dead a long time ago, bluntly. Um, our archers are getting absolutely shredded by the quarrelers. I'm going to start pulling them back maybe just a little bit. Drop the... Uh, the incantation to heal them up onto the Tomb King. I'm just keeping the Necrotect alive in the backline here to do as much morale boosting as possible. And we're going to get the Sepulchral Stalkers to absolutely just ravage. Looks like I've already summoned the Ushapti. I forgot about it, but never mind. <laughs> uh, and now the Necropolis Knights I've been keeping in reserve to deal with these guys are going to come into their own. We're going to get our Ushapti into the front line now. I haven't been using any of Kalida's spells because I am a Muppet. There you go. I mean, we lost in the Hekara Warriors, that sucks, but I think we've done enough. I think this battle is ours now. And if this battle is indeed ours, then that's huge. Because this is the Dwarven force in the area. Oh no, we hadn't summoned the Ushabti, we just kind of worked our way up to them. Yes! Oh, we abused the AI so horribly here. Let's give a Jaff's incantation of blades to the, uh, yeah, the summoned Ushabti. No, uh, sorry, our Ushabti, not the summoned. No uh, we'll get the Tomb Scorpion here to pivot and help the Necrotect out, because we don't want to lose the Necrotect. And we'll just, uh, we'll get the artillery fire into nothing because the battle's won. I don't want to risk any friendly fire. So, we're going to halt the fire here, and we are going to go in uh, with the Sepulchral Stalkers and try and take out a couple of the Lords. We kept the Necropolis Knights in reserve for a very long time, that battle. That may have been a mistake, but nothing is crumbling. We've lost two units of archers and one unit of Nehekara warriors, and for a battle of this size and scale, I am more than happy to accept those losses. We'll get Kalida to start hunting down the Lords along with our Sepulchral Stalker units. Sepulchral Stalkers are fantastic Lord Snipers. Hopefully we can get this done. And actually, I'm just going to take a breather while we run these down. This was such a scary fight, man. Such a terrifying battle. Because if we lost this, then, or any of the subsequent battles, then a unit was wiped out. Oh, the summon du Shapti. Okay. At least I think it was them. If it wasn't, I'm in trouble. Just chasing down the Fane and the remaining lords now. We've got some Tomb Scorpions and the Necropolis Knights just running over a few units on the way back. I'll see you on the campaign map. I am flabbergasted that we won that. I just, I thought we could use the choke points, but it exceeded even my wildest dreams that the catapults did 81,000 damage. 6.3 gold K value, holy. 6.3 K gold value, not gold K. Uh, oh my god. Right, well. Um, we did lose a couple of archer units, but most of our stuff is still pretty healthy, and most of their stuff isn't. We are going to take the healing. We're going to scroll through the number of enemies killed in that battle. And then we are going to take the decisive victory over what is left. And that, I think, is the back-breaking move.
for the Dwarves of Iron Browse Expedition. We do still have a problem here in the south. We are currently recruiting to try and deal with it and hopefully we'll be able to get our forces online before anything happens there. Now, we did lose a couple of units here. For Queen Kalida. So, given that we can't recruit high quality units, we're looking at regiments of renown or legions of legends. So, can we awaken anything? No canopic no jars, no gold. No canopic jars, no eggs, no steel, no gold. Okay. That's not looking too good. Um, yeah, that's awkward. Okay. What do we do here? I think that for the time being, we global recruit the two units of archers and the Nehekara warriors back. That'll give us time to replenish, and then we can march on the Lost Plateau and Karak Zorn. And actually, looking at this, there's a chance that we could march in on the back end of Krokgar's territory, depending on how well the war with the dwarves jo does go. The Doomglade here does have some walls. I'm not going to... put too much more in that settlement though. I will upgrade what we have in Libarus because I think Libarus will hold. My will be done. And I think team that that once we spend these skill points is where we're going to call it an episode because holy that fight was exhausting. And we didn't lose a hero that's really important. Get a grab increase mobility and an upgrade in Conqueror so that Kalida can get around the map quicker and that he is better in melee combat. And I am going to go for the incantation of the Skull Storm and magic. No, we're going to go for the incantation of the Skull Storm. We're fighting against the dwarves for a little while, and that does mean we're going to be experiencing some dampening. But that is not the end of the world. All right. Thank you very much for watching, everyone. Huge battle in today's episode. In the next one, we will continue to take the battle to the dwarves and defend our territory as best we may from the ravages of the lizard men. I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.